Well, my name is Brandon Strode, and this is my wife Erica Strode, and we've been together for like seven years now. It's been a ride. We uh, we have three kids currently, one on the way. We have two older kids who are teenagers, just which is scary in and of itself. Um, and then our youngest is is five, and then obviously our our newest one he'll be he'll November be born. 1st. Yep, November first. Yeah. <laughs> It's had its ups and downs as far as our, the way our, um, our life has gone, um, and in particular for our youngest daughter. Um, our youngest daughter, Adeline, is, is five now, but when last year, right after she turned four, um, she was diagnosed with cancer. So uh, when Adeline first got sick, she, uh, she's had like cold symptoms, and we didn't think anything of it. So we took her to her, her pediatrician, and the pediatrician did their diagnose, diagnostic uh, test, and they said, well, we think she has mono. As she goes back to the pediatrician, they, they notice again, well, it feels like her spleen is still enlarged, which, you know, we want to keep an eye on that, but it could, couldn't happen with even viral because she tested negative for mono. The doctor came in and said, hey, I called up to Children's Hospital and talked to, um, the hematologist yep and we'd like to go we'd like you to go see them they want you to come in tomorrow and I mean it was literally the very next day and I thought oh hematology that's that's blood work that's you know maybe they just want to run some blood tests this would be a quick appointment we're gonna go up some blood work and come back and so uh, I took Adeline up to the children's hospital so we go in and the doctor comes in and it's it's late the doctor comes in he does his diagnostic test and says well I, I don't think that that's her spleen so I'd like to have an ultrasound done just to check to see what it is. And we spend probably the next two hours getting imaging done of, of that area. You know, so I'm waiting, I'm texting her and saying, everything's fine, we're just we're waiting on these images, make sure the images are good before we go back upstairs. And uh, the next thing I know, the door opens up to the ultrasound room. And um, two gentlemen walk in and, you know, God bless them, I, I didn't know. I, they walked in and said, Oh hi, you know, and I, I assumed that they were just coming in here to use the room and didn't know I was in there. And uh, they walk in, introduce themselves, and, and uh, the, one of the doctors he says, "Well, I'm a surgeon, and um, I'm sure that they've told you about the tumor." And you know, in the back of my head, like yeah, in in all reality, like the first thing that processed my head was like tumor. Like I couldn't believe what I was hearing what's happening right now what's uh what's going on you know what, what are we going to do from here like I, I just never pictured in a million years that one of my kids one of our kids would have cancer you always see the worst on television you know the worst is like they can barely move they're you know vomiting or sick you know just all just wasting away and that's what you know that's the picture that you get in your mind when you hear that your child has cancer is like oh my gosh like that's gonna be my child before she was sick we would make an excuse. Oh, we're not gonna go to church this Sunday. We have this to do, or we have that to do. Um, and a lot of people, when your child gets sick, you run away from God, but we ran to him and we we knew we needed him to get through. Uh, I remember right before her surgery, um, we went to her uncle's house and, and he prayed over our, um, Adeline. And I just remember this intense feeling of you know, originally she's sitting here on my lap. He's standing over, put his, put his hand on her. Erica's standing to my right and, you know, holding on to my shoulder here. And the, the older kids are off to the left and they're, you know, bowing their heads. And I just remember this intense feeling of when he was praying that there was almost like another hand on my left shoulder. And it was almost like, uh, it was like almost like God was just telling us like, it's okay, I'm here. And. Uh, I think it really helped give, give me the strength to make it through the next few days, the next few weeks, because they were hard. Going into the surgery, um, you don't know what to expect. Neither does neither does the four-year-old when she goes in and she's freaked out because she doesn't want to leave her parents or um, she doesn't understand what's happening. Every single time we're, we went to the hospital for chemo, we'd go once a week. Right before we'd start, we'd pray, and we'd pray for her and we'd pray for all the other kids. You don't stop and think about how many children actually have cancer until you see it and you see their fear and their parents' fear. Um, and that's what made us start One Ribbon. 
um, you know, there's tons of help out there. I mean, mm-hmm. you you get you go up to the cancer yeah. floor and you get a yeah. big folder, and in that folder is a bunch of different organizations that want to help you. Mm-hmm. They want to help pay for things. They want to give gifts to your to your child. They want to do a lot of different things. But the one thing, the one thing that we both noticed that was not included in any of those packets was anything about God. And like, to be quite honest, I don't know how people get through it without God. No. I honestly don't. I now that we've you know now that we're praying every day and i see all the time the ways that god moves um, to help us to help other families i've seen where prayer just it really helps and something that i've made a point to kind of always tell people and always put in my blogs is like when you're angry tell god mm-hmm. you, if you would if you tell god he's listening it may not change it may not change what you're going through. You're, you're still going to be going through pediatric cancer. You're still going to be a little angry. But it, it what it does do is it relieves some of that tension from you. It relieves some of that that anger and just kind of, you know, you lay it at God's feet. You lay it and just say, please, Lord, just take this from me. 